In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up internet enabled responses from LLMs. What we're going to be using for this is Serper, Firecrawl. We're going to optionally have OpenAI as well as Langchain for embeddings. And then we're going to be using a model router called Not Diamond. And depending on the query that you send in, it's going to route dynamically to different models. In this case, I have some models from Anthropic. OpenAI, as well as Gemini. Let's just try this out. When did ChatGPT Canvas come out? We're going to specify we're going to scrape three pages. We're not going to be skipping the embedding step in this example. And what this will do is it will give us a response back of ChatGPT Canvas was launched on October 3rd, 2024. We see that it routed to GPT-40 Mini based on the context that it was sent from what was scraped and then also the similarity results from the embeddings. Now, why I set this up the way that I did is sometimes you actually want all of the context that might be on a website. So if I say skip embeddings to true, what that will do is it's going to send the payload of the entire markdown that we scraped through Firecrawl into the LLM for a response. A use case for this is say if context is really important and I say something like give me an example of how to set up Firecrawl and Node.js, if I send that through, what that's going to do is we're going to get the top three results. We're going to skip that entire embed portion. Now the time to first token might be a little bit longer for this because we are sending in the entire page of all of those different pages that we scraped. But if we look at the answer, it's giving us instructions that at a glance look correct. Now where this can be useful is if I ask how to set up Firecrawl in Node.js, this is ChatGPT's response where it's not giving me actually what I want. What I wanted was that example that is using Mendable, which is the correct way on how to set this up. I'm going to be walking through the endpoint in terms of how to set this up. Now, all of the different API keys that we'll need to set this up is we're going to need a search engine API set up with Serper. We're going to need an API key for Firecrawl. We're going to need an API key for OpenAI, which we're using for embeddings. And then it's set up in a way where you could change it, where if you just want to use one of the providers, say if you want to use OpenAI as well as GPT-40 Mini through to the O1 series of models, you could do that. Or if you want to use, say, Anthropic, and Haiku through Sonnet and Opus, you could use that. Or you can use all of the different models and all of the different providers that you'd like. You can really have a bit of flexibility. And you'll see in the example on how you can select the different models that you choose to route between. If you're pulling down the repo, you will be able to just bun install everything. Alternatively, if you're going through this step by step, you can just bun create next app, create it within the root of your directory. And then once you're within the directory, we're going to be installing three different things. We're going to be installing Firecrawl, we're going to be installing Langchain, and then finally we're going to be installing Not Diamond as well. From there, just go ahead and add in your API key. Firecrawl, Serper, Not Diamond, and OpenAI. Like I mentioned, if you just wanted to use something like the OpenAI API key, you could use that as well, and then just specify the different models that you want to route towards with the OpenAI series of models. Once you have those removed, just make sure you remove the dot example from the repo. Once we have our packages installed and our environment variables set up, we can go with an app and we're just going to set up a route with an API slash LLM. And then we're going to make a file called route.ts. So the first thing that we're going to do within our route is we're going to import all of our different dependencies, Firecrawl, Langchain, as well as not Diamond. From there, we're just going to set up our environment variables. We're just going to make sure that we do a quick check to make sure that we have all of them set up. If you just want to use OpenAI, you will be able to remove and do a little bit of configuring where you could just swap out Google as well as Anthropic and just use OpenAI or some sort of combination of the ones that you'd like to route towards. Once we do that, we're going to initialize all of the different clients that we're going to be using. Firecrawl, we're going to be initializing Not Diamond, and then finally we're going to be setting up those embeddings APIs for if we decide to use embeddings within our response. From there, we're just going to set up a handful of TypeScript interfaces, which will become clear on what they're doing as we go through the rest of the code here. First, we're going to be setting up a function that will handle our search functionality. So in this case, we're going to be using Serper. I'll also put a link within the description of if you want to use different providers, whether it's Google or whether you want to use DuckDuckGo. You can really use whatever you like. But essentially how it works is we're going to be sending in the message here. And alternatively, what you could do within here is you could further optimize this potentially if you want to put an LLM in front of your search engine API to optimize the query for a search engine. But you could imagine if you send in a ton of different contexts, it might not be the best query depending on what you're doing. But if you're just asking questions and stuff like this, this should work pretty well. So basically all it is, we're going to be sending a post request with our API key of the message that we have within the query of our API. If we have any errors, we're going to log those out. 
Alternatively, we're going to send back all of that response data. Once we have that, we're just going to be normalizing the data a little bit. And the main piece of this are going to be the links that we're going to be sending within the next step to Firecrawl. From here, we're going to be setting up our function for Firecrawl. Within this, we're going to be passing in that payload that we got from our Serper API. And then we're going to map through all of the different links that we had returned. Right now at time of recording, there are some links that aren't supported. So when I was setting this up, I did run into some issues where it would try and scrape social media sites. I just made sure to exclude all of those because for the most part, those aren't really relevant to the types of questions that I think are probably going to be asked. Once we have that, we're just going to make sure all of the different links that we got from our SERP API don't match any of the above. From there, we're just going to filter out all of those different links. And then if for whatever reason, there are no valid URLs, say if you're asking something really specific about Facebook or what have you, and all of the search engine results are from those links, we are just going to send back a message to the client. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to send all of those filtered URLs to the new batch scrape capability within Firecrawl. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be specific that we want the entire page effectively, and we want it in the format of Markdown. And the reason why Markdown is helpful is because it's a succinct block that we can send to the LLM, and it makes it really easy to send in that entire context with, without having additional wasted tokens that could be within HTML, for instance. So and then similarly to above, if there are any errors, we are going to be sending that back to the clients. And then finally, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mapping through all of the different results that we got from Firecrawl. You do get the content and then you also get a little bit of metadata for the page. In this case, we're going to be returning the URL, the title, as well as the content, which is effectively, you can think of it as the entirety of the page. Next, we're going to be setting up our embeddings. And this is essentially that optional reg functionality where it can be useful if you don't want to pass in the entire context of all of the page. And you might have to do this depending on what LLMs you decide to use. What this is going to do is we're going to have a recursive character text splitter. All that this is basically going to do is it's going to go through all of the contents that we had scraped, and then we're going to send it into OpenAI to create an embeddings for us. From there, we're going to be storing those vectors in memory, and then we're going to immediately query that in the process of this API request. And this will allow us to send a smaller payload to the LLM, which will allow us to save on cost, as well as potentially latency for things like the time to first token. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a simple function that all this is going to do is we're going to concatenate all of the different pages contents together. And this is going to allow us to have that nice succinct text block of all of the context that we're passing in. We're going to say, here's the page title, the URL, as well as the content. And it's going to loop through all of those one by one. Once we have that, we're going to generate our LLM response. Now, the way that not diamond works is we're going to be able to specify the different LLM providers here. Here I have OpenAI's GPT-40 mini. I have Anthropic. I have Google. Then you can specify the trade-off. You have the option of cost, latency, or it will just default to the quality of the response. The one thing to know with this is you're not actually sending any API keys through not diamond it's going to return the response of what it thinks the best model for the query that you send in. And then it's going to generate a response on our side within our client code to get that response for us. Once we have that, we're going to be setting up our post request. First, we're going to set up a simple try catch. Within here, we're going to just structure three different things that we're going to get from the page. So the message, the number of pages to crawl, as well to whether or not skip the embeddings process. First, we're just going to make sure that we do have a valid message from the query. That's the one thing that we do have to make sure that we get. From there, we're just going to log out all of the different messages. So while we're setting this up, you have something within your server logs or on your endpoint. From there, we're just going to validate the pages to crawl. We're just going to make sure that it's within that range. From here, we're just going to invoke the process that we had just set up in the previous examples. So we're going to query our search engine API. We're going to scrape those URLs. Then once we have all of those results back, we're going to see whether the user specified to skip the embed or not. Here is where you can also specify the chunk size. And this is the number of characters that we're passing into the vector dimensions. But you can play around with these numbers as well if you'd like. This is the number of similarity results. A good next step potentially is you could put these within the API request themselves if you want to have additional control of the number of similarity results as well as the chunk size and overlap. Once we have that, we're just going to log out the generated content. And then finally, we're going to generate the response and make sure it is valid before we prepare the response and ultimately send that back with the payload of the answer, the selected model from not diamond, as well as the crawl information. So the actual pages that were scraped, as well as whether it was specified to use embed or not. And then finally, we're going to send that back to the client 
And if we have any errors, we're just going to log those out. That's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to thank Firecrawl for partnering on this video. I'm going to put all of the links to everything within the description of the video. But if you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.